Hello and good evening, you all. Uh, apologies for uh, delay, for the delay. We had a bit of an issue at the very beginning, but we are here, so do not worry. Uh, we are back and uh, we will definitely go ahead with our next IVF webinar tonight. And with us is there is uh, Dr. Maria R.K. Some of the some of you probably already know her. She is from Fertility International. Hi, Dr. Maria. Hope you are feeling good today. Good evening. How are you, Caroline? Good to, to be with you here tonight. It's a pleasure to have you as always. And I'm good and uh, all is working. So that is the most important part. Uh, please let us know that you can hear, hear us as well. So we want to make sure all is working. Thank you so much for that. And as always, just simply let me remind you that uh, without uh, the ambassadors and partners, you can see right here uh, this whole Stronger Together initiative, all of those events that we are having twice a day, it wouldn't be possible. So huge thanks to all of them, to our partners and ambassadors. And uh, you will be able to meet two of uh, such ambassadors even tomorrow. So please stay tuned with all of our events. And tonight we, um, we will go ahead with the next uh, topic. This time, legal aspects, sperm, egg, and embryo donation, adoption. And as I've already mentioned, Dr. Maria R.K. is with us from Ferti International, located in Barcelona. She will start with her presentation. And after the presentation, it is, as always, your time for your questions. So all you need to do is just simply to type this all in the chat section. And uh, Dr. Maria will definitely provide you with all the details uh, thank you i can see some of you are back and uh, we were uh, i've been able to see you uh, earlier tonight as well so i'm very happy to see you here and well that is it from me dr maria are you ready to begin yes i'm ready and uh, thanks for the kind introduction caroline Perfect. so uh, caroline has said um the topic tonight is legal aspects about sperm Egg and, um, egg and donation, and also embryo donation and adoption here in Spain. So first of all, uh, I would like to start the presentation explaining that the ART le legislation are the, the laws that regulate the use of any assisted reproductive techniques, and that that legislation can be different, uh, can differ a little bit with, depending on the country where you're going to do the treatment. Uh, Spain has been one of the first countries to have a legislation for that, and it has already been updated several times to try to adapt to the new circumstances, to the new problems that patients are facing, and to try to, to uh, offer the best possible treatment options to, to the patients that we already have in our country or patients that are coming from, from other countries. So what are the main objectives of the assisted reproduction uh, technique legislations? So the, the law aims to, first of all, regulate the application uh, of the scientifically and clinically indicated proven assisted reproductive techniques. Uh, the second thing is to regulate the application of any assisted reproductive treatment in the prevention and treatment of diseases that have a genetic origin using the pre-implantational genetic testing. And uh, third, it is meant to regulate all the assumptions and requirements for the use of cryoconserved uh, human gametes or pre-embryos as well. So what are the requirements to perform uh, an assisted reproductive technique in, in Spain? So in Spain, uh, we can do assisted reproductive techniques only when there is reasonable chance of success, when this poses any important or serious risk uh, to health, physical or mental of the woman who or the possible offspring generated out of this treatment. And then uh, obviously we need the prior informed consent uh, of the patient who's going to undergo the treatment, making sure that she has been duly informed about all the possible risks, all the possible side effects, and all the possible complications out of, a, of the treatment. And then in Spain, it is not clearly regulated by the law, but there is kind of a general agreement between all the clinics in, in Spain to not treat patients who are over 50, to try to diminish the risk of having any kind of complications during the pregnancy. 
and also to protect the, the, the health of the offspring. So what are the assisted reproductive treatments that we can do in Spain? So in Spain, it's legal to do ovulation induction. We can do intrauterine inseminations with partner sperm or with donor sperm. We can do pre implantational genetic testing for aneuploidies, for monogenic diseases, and also for a, a reorganization of, of the structural um, of the chromosomes. Uh, we can do donation and we can also do a shared motherhood. And the treatments that are not legal, that we cannot offer in Spain, are gender selection, neither surrogacy. So what do we know about the legislation regarding egg donation in Spain? So egg donation in Spain, it's anonymous, which means that you cannot know the identity of the egg donor and neither the donor can know your identity. The second important thing is that egg donation is an altruistic act in Spain, which means that um, the donors will just get a compensation uh, for all the days that they have to come to the clinic to tests and all those things, but it's not look a lucrative uh, thing as it might be in other countries. And the third important thing is that um, under Spanish legislation, it is the medical team who is responsible for selecting the egg donor. And the law also says that we have to seek for the maximum phenotype and immunological similarity between the donor and the person who's going to receive the eggs, which means that to say it in a very simple way, we have to try to look for your 25-year-old twin sister in that sense, okay? Someone that has similar color of eyes, skin, hair, height, weight, uh, ethnicity, and all those things. And how, how does that work for a sperm donation? For sperm donation is exactly the same thing. It is also anonymous, it is also altruistic, and it is also the medical team who has to do the selection of the sperm donor according to the characteristics, uh, both from the phenotype, so the physical characteristics in the blood group, uh, to try to match with the person who's going to receive the eggs as much as possible. So what are the... What are the requirements that uh, we uh, ask egg donors to have before we can accept them for, for an egg donation program? So which are the criteria? So egg donors must be healthy women and uh, sperm donors must be healthy men who are between 18 and 34 years old for women. For men, it's a little bit more wide, the, the window of time in which we can use them. And uh, we have to do a very exhaustive medical and family history to make sure that they don't have any medical information. Um, sorry, uh, any medical problems in the family. Uh, we have to do psychological tests as well to make sure that it's normal. And we have to do blood type and RH and make vitals as well to make sure that they don't have any infectious disease and the same uh, for uh, the screening for sexual transmitted diseases. Then from the genetic perspective, there are two different kinds of tests that we're going to do. One of the tests is the karyotype, that the karyotype is like our map of chromosomes. We, all human beings, we have a map of chromosomes, and sometimes we might be carriers of small changes in the chromosomes that might not affect ourselves, but uh, if we were about to have a child with someone, uh, that might increase the risk of having embryos that are abnormal, and therefore all the uh, donors, both sperm donors and egg donors, must have a normal karyotype in order to be accepted for the for the cycle. And then there is another kind of genetic test that checks for different kinds of diseases. It doesn't check for alterations in the structure of the chromosomes, that this is what the karyotype checks for. It checks for what we call monogenic diseases. And all human beings, we can be carriers of some genetic diseases that are not uh, affecting ourselves. But if we were about to have a child with someone who carries that same disease, we would have 25% chances of having a child affected. So one of the things that we can do is do that genetic test to the, to the donor and do the genetic test in the case that we're using an egg donor and we're using our partner's sperm, we can do also that test to our partner. And that way we can do the genetic matching that means that we would select the donor, not only according to the physical characteristics, but also according to the genetic information that we got out of that test. And then apart from that, we also have to do some um, fertility tests in the case of um, 
uh, female donors and egg donors, we have to do uh, the AMH and the a transvaginal scan, which are going to give us information regarding that everything is fine and that they can, they have a good ovarian reserve, that there are no alterations in, in anything that might contraindicate, contraindicate the donation. And in the case of uh, the sperm donors, we have to do semen analysis. So is there a national donor registry in Spain? Yes, it is in phase of, this is something that it's in phase of implementation. It is a, a, called CIDA, which is Assisted Human Reproduction Information System. And this system connects the fertility clinics in Spain and it's uh, to aim to control better the reproductive outcomes out of the cycles of the donors that we're doing, okay? This is something that it has been requested by all the fertility clinics here for a very long time, and uh, now we are in the process of implementing it. At 40, we are in the in the. Um, the there are there is a kind of a group of, of clinics we are in which we're doing like the pilot the pilot uh, study or or use of, of this program, and we're doing that already, uh, aiming to to try to have better control of all these, and and hopefully very soon is going to be implemented in all the clinics in Spain. What about embryo adoption? What do we know about embryo adoption? So embryo adoption is also anonymous. Uh, that means that obviously uh, the person who's going to receive the embryo cannot know about the identity of the of the persons who, who have uh, created that embryo. It is also altruistic and there is some medical criteria uh, to to make sure that this embryo can be used for other for other couples. First of all, one of the main important things is that any embryo that is donated for other couples, the woman um, uh, with which we've, uh, we've created those embryos uh, must uh, be uh, under 35 in the moment that the embryos were created. Why? That's the same limitation as we, we pose to egg donors because we know that after 35, the egg quality and quantity um, decreases a lot with age and to try to minimize the risk of having any kind of uh, chromosomal abnormality, uh, that's the reason why we also limit the age of the woman in that sense. The other um, mandatory thing is that both the male and the female have had, um, had to have a negative vital screening, uh, otherwise we cannot use those embryos for, for the uh, program of embryo adoption. And they have to, uh, there cannot be any known genetic diseases in the family or, or themselves. That doesn't necessarily mean um, that all the embryos have been screened for doing that genetic matching that I explained before that we can do for egg donors and sperm donors. A lot of times with embryos that are, adopt, are, are for adoption, we don't, have, we don't have all that screening, but we make sure that an embryo that we are donating or using for donation, that the, the persons with which we've created these embryos did not have any important medical known problem, neither themselves, neither in the family. And uh, what does the legislation in Spain says about how many embryos can we have transferred? So the Spanish law establishes a maximum of three embryos per embryo transfer. This is because there's parts of the law uh, that are still uh, a little bit um, according to, to the parameters that were used some years ago when blastocyst uh, transfer was not uh, generalized as it is now. And uh, when we were transferring transferring embryos on day three, the majority of um, clinics and a lot of cases there were two embryos transferred and in some cases three. Nowadays, what I have to say is that the tendencies that we tend to transfer what would what would single embryo transfer of an embryo at the blastocyst stage, that's our medical recommendation. And in our clinic, that's what we do. We always transfer uh, at blastocyst stage, there's very, very specific cases in which we might consider transferring on day three, but most uh, most of the cases we always transfer um, at the blastocyst stage. And I am a very strong defender of single embryo transfer, not only because uh, of the fact that for us it's very important to, to help you guys get pregnant, but also because for us it's very important to look at the, at the broad picture. And we not only want 
patients who are pregnant, but we also want healthy families and healthy babies. And we know that uh, multiple pregnancies are much more risky than singleton pregnancies. And that's the main reason why we want to minimize the, that risk. And therefore, what we do is transfer usually, I'd say more than 90% of the times we transfer only one embryo. And in some cases, we, we transfer two embryos. We never transfer three embryos. Um, another question that I get asked a lot is, for how long can my embryos, eggs, or sperm uh, be frozen in Spain? So the embryos and the eggs can remain frozen in storage until the, the patient who's freezing the eggs or the embryos has the legal age to use them in Spain, which is 50 years old for the women. Or in the case that, uh, that she doesn't have any medical condition that would contraindicate its use. Okay, and uh, the law states that the sperm can remain frozen during the whole life of, of the men. Um, another important thing to, to consider is what are the possible destinations of the frozen embryos or sites or sperm? So basically the law contemplates the following, or to save them for own use, and which is uh, usually what I always recommend to all patients to to, to mark in the informed consent when, when they are about to start the cycle because until we don't have the certainty that you have achieved a pregnancy and you have already had a child, which is the main reason why you're doing a fertility treatment, it is better that if we have any chance of freezing any embryos uh, to, to keep them for own use until we have that certainty. And afterwards, you always have the chance to, to, to change the, the destination of the embryos if there were embryos remaining frozen and you don't want to use them for your own because you have already fulfilled your your family project you can always donate them for reproductive purposes to other couples if you fulfill all, all these criteria that i explained before that the woman is under 35 when she uh, has done the cycle and the those embryos were created if there are no uh, no infectious diseases and if there are no known genetic problems or other medical problems in in the family of neither of of the members who have created those embryos. And then there's also the option of the cessation of the conservation uh, without other use uh, for, for all of the embryos, or sites or sperm. Uh, do the Spanish fertility centers have to report their results to, to some kind of organization? So yes, in Spain, fertility centers uh, report the results to the Spanish Fertility Society. And in Catalonia, we also report them to the OCAT, that it's like the organization for organs, uh, the Catalan Organization for Organs and, and Transplants and Use of, of Health and Tissues. Um, the fact that we have to report all those results uh, warranties the control, the quality, the transparency, uh, security and traceability of all the processes that, that, that we do. And helps us obviously to, to, to have track, uh, to, um, to track all, all the results and see if there was any problem with any baby, uh, with any donor, everything can, can be recorded, can be traced and we can, and we can obviously have uh, much better control and give much more security to any patient who is willing to undergo a treatment in Spain. So this is it. That's the, the presentation regarding all the important aspects uh, related with the law in Spain with uh, sperm egg donation and uh, embryo adoption. And now uh, I will be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for explaining us all the details and uh, for so much information that I'm sure is useful. And yes, there are plenty of questions already. So let's get to it. And of course, uh, let me start right here. Uh, okay, just a minute. Okay, could you please first uh, just uh, explain short motherhood? What does it mean? Yeah, so shared motherhood is a treatment that we can offer for same-sex couples. So in case that uh, two females who are a couple, they want to undergo a fertility treatment and they both want to participate in the treatment, one of the things that we can do is um, we one, one of them would, would um, 
undergo a, a stimulation, like, like if she was about to do the IVF cycle, then we would do the egg collection. We would put the eggs with the sperm of a sperm donor in the lab, and we would create the embryos. So we would let those eggs that we have collected fertilize with the sperm in the lab. We'll let them develop until they reach the stage of blastocyst. In the meantime, the other, the other girl of the couple would do an endometrial preparation. And then when she is ready, we, we would be uh, undergoing the embryo transfer. That way, both of them can participate in the process. Okay, thank you so much for explaining that to us. And uh, can you tell us a bit on how it's done, how you select the egg donors? Do you use a computer program? Yeah, so we always select the egg donor uh, using the, um, the, phenot the phenotype of, of the partner, of, of the couple who is about to do the, the treatment or the patient. So first of all, we are going to ask you to fill in um, uh, a form with all your your physical characteristics then we're going to ask you for pictures and then uh, we use an uh, also it, there's al always a, a team of biologists uh, uh, nurses and doctors who are participating in, in that process and we also use an artificial intelligence device in the in the clinic that helps to analyze more than 100 uh, points in the in the face to try to seek for the maximum similarity as possible. Mm -hmm. Perfect, thank you so much again. And when we are uh, talking about the donors, can you tell us a bit on what information can we know about the donor? Yeah, so the information that you can know about the donor is basically general information. You can know the ethnicity, you can know the age, the blood group, and general physical characteristics. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and so there are just several questions already about the um, all different kinds of donors. I mean, yeah, so do you have Thai sperm donors by any chance? Or if you can, mm -hmm. do you find like, donors from ethnic other than Caucasian as well? Yes. Um, specifically for Thai sperm donors, I would have to check, but I think that, that we, we can find, if we don't have sperm donors uh, with the banks that we currently and not normally use, we, we would uh, be able to, to look for, for a Thai sperm donor. I don't think that we should have a problem with that. It is very specific, so it might be a little bit more tricky to find it, but I think that it should be fine. And then uh, we also have donors that are, are not Caucasian. Uh, we also have, uh, yeah, donors from all from all other ethnicities. Mm -hmm. And is, is there true, like a? It is okay. true that there are some specific ethnicities that it might be a little bit more difficult to find donors, uh, because because of for cultural aspects or or some different reasons they are not that prone or keen to to donate, to donate eggs and it might be a little bit more tricky but so far we've had eggs from from all ethnicities mm -hmm. okay thank you and is there like a longer sometimes waiting time if uh, if there's a um request for yeah exactly for example uh donors uh indian donors or uh oriental donors especially japanese uh, it, it, it can be a little bit more tricky and it can, can take a little bit longer to find the donor. Um, but okay. so far, we've all, always found the donors. It took a little bit longer or it took a little but, bit less, but, but yeah. It's still possible. Sometimes mm -hmm. you just need to be more patient. Because, yeah, you know. exactly. Okay. Thank you so much. And regarding the, um, the information about the donor, is it possible so about the to know the level of education yeah i mean uh honestly speaking i i don't want to say that as a warranty because sometimes we don't have that information about the level of education so it's usually not disclosed because we a lot of times we don't have that information Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, okay, just one more thing about the donors. Um, just to make sure. Sorry, I just want to see. Uh, Thai donors are available, but very expensive. So, can you tell mm. me a bit on that? Well, most likely, uh, the the thing is that it's it's a it's a matter of uh, 
how offer and demand it, it's it, it's as, as simple as it is and probably there's high demand for Thai donors and very little very little offer and that's probably the main reason why they are why it is more expensive okay thank you for clarifying this for us as well okay and well there is another question about the donors so in some countries there is the possibility for the offspring to know some information when they are 18 is this possible in spain you have already mentioned but if you could just uh, add something yeah egg, donate, uh, egg donation sperm donation in in spain are anonymous so the child the only information that will have is in the case that the the person who has done the, the treatment decides to disclose the fact that they have done the treatment, they will be able to know the, uh, the general characteristics that have been given, but that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you again for the question as well as your answer. Okay. And there's another one uh, regarding similar uh, aspects. So, okay, here. What about black donor? My husband is Caucasian and I'm brown skin from the island. Is it possible to find me a donor? Yes, it is possible to find you a donor. I have a lot of a lot of patients from from all over the world, honestly, but a lot of a, a lot of patients with brown skin and we always find uh, donors, so that should be no problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you again for your question and your answer to it. Um, just to give me a second, uh, there's another question in regards to that. In Italy, the fi female donors must have, must, uh, 20 years old. Do you know why it's 20 and not 18? Hmm. So most likely, uh, what I would say is that even though in Spain it is between, the law states that it should be between 18 and maximum 35, almost the vast majority of our donors are between 20 and 33. First of all, because sometimes there might be, uh, there are some studies saying that when the donors are very, very young, maybe the egg quality is not as good because maybe they have not reached that, that point of maturity yet. And then just also to make sure that they are completely aware and conscious about what they are doing. So probably I think that the main reason is that, but uh, nothing else. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you again for clarifying this to us. And um, there's another question for Caucasian race. Are the donors Spanish or from other nations? So we have Spanish donors and we have uh, uh, donors from other nations. You have to think that Barcelona is a very cosmopolitan city that attracts people from, from all over Europe and well, from all over the world, but especially from all over Europe. So we have a lot of uh, donors who are young professionals or who are at college in the Erasmus programs or things like this. And they are residents here in, in Barcelona and they donate their eggs. So we have uh, donors from, from a lot of different nationalities especially around Europe. All right. Thank you so much. Again. And now let's go to a different topic. And uh, do you use time lapse in your clinic? Um, we don't use time lapse, Shaivi, because um, at the end of the day, most of the times, uh, and there is some data saying that, is that even though time lapse can give you uh, useful information in the term, in in the sense of the exact times when the embryo is dividing, and then you can see if the chronobiology of the embryo is exactly how it should be, and it could help you to to select better between two blastocysts that they might look exactly the same or very similar. Generally speaking, the main criteria that most biologists end up using when they are about to to choose a the embryo that has uh, to be transferred as the best one, it's the morphology. So uh, the morphology that the embryo has on day five, that's the criteria that remains uh, the, the leading one or the most important one. And, uh, and, that, and as there is some controversy in the sense of if the fact of using time-lapse might increase or not success rates, uh, we're not using that at the clinic because we are, we are uh, sticking with the fact of using the, the morphology as the main criteria. And so far we're having very good results with that. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, thank you again for explaining that uh, to us. And uh, there is another question here. Is there a guarantee in case of genetic problems caused from the egg donor? Is there a warranty in case of genetic problems caused caused from the egg donor? So, if there was a baby born with a with a genetic problem, then we we establish a protocol in which we have to to do the specific. We have to first of all know which is the genetic disease. Check if it, it comes from the father or if it comes from the donor or is what we call a de novo mutation. Even though we do test genetic test to the donor. And even though we try to minimize the risk of having any genetic problem, there are some genetic diseases that we cannot predict and we cannot do tests for. And obviously, uh, that's that's a risk when you are having a child with your own ex. That's also a risk. But obviously, if that was the case, there is all a protocol in which we have to establish and, and study. We, the first thing that we would do, obviously, is, is block this donor. This donor would not be used for anyone else. And then we would run all the necessary tests on the donor and on the uh, on the sperm, uh, regardless of the fact if the sperm is from a sperm donor or the partner, to assess where that genetic problem comes from and if that could be prevented or not. And uh, then, depending on the result and the situation, we would take it from there and analyze the situation. Uh, thank you again for that. Okay, um, there's another one coming there up. Is following with that, that's the main reason why it is so important, the fact that we have to report all the results to the OCAD and the Spanish Fertility Society, because that's the main reason why we do that. Also, oh, okay. to, to track if there is any, any baby with any genetic problem and why, and if it came from a donor, or all those things. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much again. Um, there's another question, actually. Supposing that I do not know any couple ready to provide me with a donor's embryo, does egg donation is a service offered by your clinic? So I'm a bit confused with the question. The thing is, if, even if you don't want to do, I mean, if you if you don't have a partner and you're considering doing embryo adoption or, or embryo donation, this is something that you can do. It's not, I mean, you don't need to know any couple who's ready to provide you with an embryo, um, okay. with, with an embryo uh, to do an embryo adoption. In Spain, you can do that. It would be anonymous, but you can do that. And you can also do egg donation. So we, we offer both services, embryo adoption and, and, and egg donation. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, just let's give it Oh, okay. Okay. It's, uh, okay. Let me just go to the question. The patient has just added. Sorry. Just give me a second. There was this one and let me show you. Um, here. So do you intermediate egg donation? I mean, without any involvement from us as a couple. So, um, okay. I'm not I sure if I'm understanding. Just, just, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could just uh, get to get back to us on that, okay? Um, once again, so okay, embryo donation. There is this embryo donation. Supposing that there are couples with vial available eggs, and mm -hmm. uh, okay, I think I'm lost as well. <laughs> so, Katie, I'm going to explain to you how that works. The thing is, for example, there is a couple who have done a cycle and they have had, I don't know how many, six blastocysts, okay? Uh, and they already had two blastocysts transferred and they had two children. And they don't want to do any more treat. They don't want to have any more children and they want to donate those embryos. The woman was less than 35 years old. They didn't have any genetic problems. They didn't have any, any um, uh, sexual transmitted diseases, neither any, any, all the infectious diseases were okay. So the embryos were okay to, to be donated. Mm -hmm. You come to our clinic and you say, okay, Maria. Um, we would like to do an embryo adoption because um, I have uh, poor egg quality or I have already attempted to do several times treatment with my own ex and I don't want to do 
uh, egg donation. And my husband has also a sperm problem, so we prefer to adopt an embryo. We would be responsible for selecting an embryo that also looks as much as you as possible, and there would be no involvement, neither any contact between the the, the couple that has generated this embryo and you and your partner. Mm-hmm. Is that what you? Had? I don't know if I'm answering your yes. question properly. I believe, yes, uh, this is the the uh, comments. Uh, proper registered with your clinic. Yes, exactly. You can go for a, yes. Perfect. Yes, I do. Yes. It's definitely possible. All right. Thank you so much for clarifying this to us as well. And I hope that uh, helped you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for confirming that this is what you meant. Thanks so much. All right. And now let me go to the next question we have. Is it allowed by law to discard pros and embryos in Spain? Is it, is it a possibility, but it's only, only uh, under some specific... Uh, uh, situations. So you can mark that as a possibility, but it would be only in the case that you are no longer 50, um, you are no longer under 50, and there's some, some kind of uh, requirements that have to be fulfilled uh, for that, to discard the embryos. It's not as easy as, as it sounds, but it is possible. If you don't want to donate them to, well, when you donate them, you can donate them for reproductive purposes. You can either uh, donate them for <clears throat> for other couples to use them uh, or you can either uh, keep them for yourself but if we are in the situation in which you are already 50 you cannot use them for your own you don't want to donate them and you don't want to donate them for reproductive purposes in that situation those embryos can be discarded mm-hmm. okay i understand actually there's um, another question here so can you use the frozen embryos for experiment with the consent of patients um, yes, so if the embryos are donated for, uh, for, um, for the purpose of investigation, the embryos can, can be used for, for, yes, for investigation. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it it has to be, also, it's not, as, it's not as easy. It is easy, but it has to be for, uh, there has to be a specific program investigating something specific, and then the embryos can be donated for this. But yes, it is possible. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you so much again. And now let me go to the next question. So, have you ever had any feedback of Down syndrome, mental illness in live birth? Hope, uh, thank God, I've never had that that, that mm-hmm. report. But uh, that doesn't mean that that could not happen. Uh, let me let me explain you about Down syndrome. Down syndrome is not a genetic problem that we can detect beforehand when we're doing the test on the on the donor or on, or the test on on the on the partner because the down syndrome is a is a de novo problem and it's generated by an alteration in the karyotype uh, in which instead of having two copies of the chromosome 21 the embryo has three copies that usually happens when there is some kind of alteration in the moment in which um, the um, the embryo has has created there has been some kind of alteration in the d- division of the chromosomes and that's the reason why that happens um, that is something that we cannot do a test on the donor and see okay the donor has these in the genes and then um, it is more likely that the, that the embryo will have uh, down syndrome no uh, the ways to detect down syndrome in 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 the offspring would be or either to do a pre-implantational genetic testing that that's something that can be done on the embryo and you know that it's a biopsy that we do on the embryos when they have five days of life and we do a karyotype on the embryo as well the same because as i explained before the karyotype is a, a genetic test that it's mandatory that we do to all donors and it has to be normal otherwise we cannot accept the donor for the donation so we can also do that karyotype to the to the embryo and uh that way we can check if the embryo has that, that genetic problem or not. In the case that pre-implantational genetic testing is not done, uh, what we usually recommend to do is the prenatal screening that it's regularly done on the first trimester of pregnancy, that it's done through a blood test and a scan. Uh, and otherwise there's another a blood test that can be done in the first trimester of pregnancy 
there's a lot of different brands right now, like Harmony Test and all those things that can um, help you predict which is the likelihood of you having a baby with some of the most important chromosomic alterations like Down syndrome, Patau syndrome, or um, uh, yeah, all, all the most important ones. And uh, in the case that it is negative, the likelihood would be very low. And if it was high, then uh, there is the option of doing a, a chorion biopsy or doing an amniocentesis, depending on the moment of the pregnancy in which you are, and then decide what to do depending on the prognosis. Perfect. Thanks so much again for answering and explaining that to us as well. Um, okay, let's go to the next question. What is the current situation due to the pandemic situation? Can we travel to Spain for medical treatments? If no, not, do you know when? Um, yeah, I mean, the current situation is that for the moment we cannot restart uh, fertility treatments. But uh, the Spanish Fertility Society and ASIVIR, which is like the main, uh, um, the main organization that regulates all, all that it's related with uh, human reproductive uh, apps, have already uh, issued a statement about what would be the, the protocols and the recommendations and the, and the steps that we need to follow to try to minimize the risk of COVID infection and the risk for, for, for patients. So the idea is that uh, most likely we will restart if everything goes well, a little, little, little mm -hmm. by little activity if if possible, towards the end of May, beginning of June, but that's to be confirmed. I don't want to give anyone any any information without having the the formal uh, confirmation from the from the main um, from the main societies, and that will also depend on how the the pandemic uh, uh, evolves in the in the following weeks. But that's the idea. The thing is that uh, for now, we don't have enough information about how COVID can affect pregnancies. The information that we have is very little because there is not, not that many studies done. Uh, there is some data saying that maybe it might be related with a little bit higher risk of miscarriage. Some data saying that maybe it has more risk of premature ovarian, uh, premature um, uh, preterm delivery, sorry, not premature ovarian failure, preterm delivery. So we, we're still gathering data to see if it would be safe or not. It doesn't look like it has teratogenic effects and it doesn't look that there is vertical transmission, so transmission from the mother to the baby in the case that the mother is uh, infected, but we still have to have to have a little bit more information. Uh, so that's the information that I can give you for now. Uh, in Spain, we're still confined, and the idea is that um, towards the 9th of May, we will start to deconfine little by little. So people will start uh, going back to work, and uh, kids are going to start to be allowed to go to the street for just short periods of time, probably at the beginning of next week, if things keep on going well. So it looks like we're starting to see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, but but there's no certainties yet. So I, I that's that's all I can tell you so far. Yes, we need to wait and mm -hmm. hope that it will be better quite soon. Fingers crossed. We are all waiting for that mm -hmm. for sure. Okay, and there's another question, just similar actually. So does the transport of biological material with courier company works in Spain now, or is it blocked as well? So far, it's blocked as well because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need to wait <laughs> for that to um, be possible as mm -hmm. well. Um, okay, there's another question which is quite interesting. So will the do egg donor come to look for the baby? Does the egg donate after so many years? Uh, I mean, when, when the egg donors um, have uh, come and, and do the, the cycle, they have to sign, obviously, an informed consent. Uh, and we are very clear about everything that we explain, and they are very aware that they are donating those eggs so that they cannot afterwards claim anything from the baby. So, And that's uh, apart from the fact that this is uh, the, an anonymous donation, so there could be no connection between the egg donor and, uh, and the baby. So it should not happen. I, I have, I mean... 
fingers crossed, but has has never happened as far as uh, we know. Okay, yeah, definitely important. But uh, well, thank you for that question for sure as well. Uh, okay, um, okay, this is another one. So, how do you choose your donor regarding their financial situation? I guess if you are checking anything like that or. I, we don't check the financial situation mm -hmm. of the donor. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you would like to add anything on that, uh, you have any extra questions, just go ahead and type it in. Okay. Thank you. And um, let's go to the next question. Do you have a donation programs with blastocyst guarantee or pregnancy guarantee or a certain number of good quality blastocysts in order to have chance to have siblings from one and the same donor? Mm -hmm. We have both. Uh, with our egg donation program, our standard egg donation program guarantees a minimum of two um, of eight uh, mature eggs from the donor and two blastocysts for transfer. The average number of blastocysts that we get out of an egg donation cycle are between three and four. But the warranty is too. And then we also have a, a we, we don't have a pregnancy warranty program, but we have a baby warranty program. So the warranty is a baby warrant. There's some specific medical criteria that you have to fulfill to be eligible for that, but, but that, that's an option. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you again for that. Um, there's a Different question here. Your clinic uh, usually accept trainee embryologists? Um, sometimes we have trainees, yes. So it would be a matter of discussing that with uh, with the with the lab manager. See if there is that's something that can be done, and uh, yeah, and, and check that out. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. And well, there's a follow-up question on the uh, baby guarantee program could mm -hmm. you explain a bit on that yeah so basically for baby warranty programs um, you you make the commitment or you pay for three full uh, egg donation cycles and uh, everything is included in the price if I'm not wrong I, I don't usually inform my patients about all the financial aspects so I I want to just clarify that I don't I don't want to make any mistakes with that, but you you have to to pay for the three full cycles. And uh, if after the three full cycles you have not had a baby born, the full money that you have paid for the for the cycle would be refunded. Um, there are some medical criteria that you have to fulfill, as I am saying, and also in the case that you're doing the treatment with your partner with your male partner he ha will have to do some specific tests also some genetic tests to check that there are no important alterations in the sperm and we have also to check that your uterus is fine and all those things and then and then if you are eligible that that's the idea mm -hmm. okay i think that um, medication that you need is also included in the price all the frozen embryo transfers from all the embryos that we get out of each uh, egg donation cycle would also be included so okay um understood and there's a follow-up question so uh, this uh, on your site is condition hbmi can you uh, tell us a bit on that what is the reason for it yeah so in in our uh, maybe warranty program um the age for egg donation the age is 50 which is the, the legal age in which we can do treatment in spain and for ivf there are different kinds of uh, of warranty programs uh pending that the warranty is a little bit different if you are 35 or you are uh, over 35 because obviously the likelihood of having a uh, successful outcome is different and the bmi it's limited as well yes the bmi has to be under 35. okay thank you again for this and just wanted to to let you know that if you would like to get more details on the prices etc as well 
all you need to do is just click on that website, ask your question, and it will be uh, sent directly to Ferti, uh, Dr. Maria, and her team, and they will definitely get back to you with more details. Okay. And uh, now let me go uh, to the next question. So I'm 44. Can I use my own X even though I'm I, my AMH is 0 0.02? Mm -hmm. At the age of 44 already, the chances of having a successful outcome, even if you had a higher AMH, would be very low because of egg quality. I cannot say that it's impossible because obviously in medicine, um, it's not like mathematics and sometimes there are kind of uh, so, some ex exceptional cases. But with an AMH of 0 0.02 and uh, at the age of 44, I think that the chances of having a pregnancy with your own eggs would be extremely, extremely low. And my very strong recommendation would be to undergo uh, the cycle with with an egg donor rather than with your own eggs. Obviously, I have very little information about your case right now. There's a lot of more things that I like to usually assess before giving any advice. But with the information that you're giving me, what I can tell you is that chances of a successful outcome with your AMH and own eggs and your age, unfortunately, are very low. Thank you again for explaining those details as well. And uh, well, uh, there are some um, there are some other questions about embryo donation uh, adoption. So first is one: Can a single lady adopt an embryo? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. There are no restrictions. So no restrictions in Spain for that. You can you can yeah, a single lady can adopt an embryo. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you so much. There is a question about the cost, but perhaps you can look at it. How much does the embryo adoption would cost the case we discussed before? Adopt an embryo, of course, and from other couples. Do you have... Uh, yeah, all the things related with costs, I don't have the, the mm -hmm. information about the cost here with me right That's now. Fine. I'm sorry. And usually I don't, I don't inform patients about that. So again, I don't want to give any misleading information. Uh, mm -hmm. If you want any information related with that, I would really recommend you to, to um, send an email to, to yes. yeah, at FERT International uh, asking for the quotation. And if you want a, a, a more specific uh, evaluation of your case, we can offer you an online uh, free consultation, uh, first consultation just to assess your case and discuss the treatment options. And, and then you can also have the quotation for the treatment options discussed. And then you take it from there and, and, and check which, which is the, the treatment that suits you better according with everything that you have uh, discussed with the doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, uh, of course. Thank you so much for that. And uh, well, there's a follow up question. So are there couples in your clinic willing to give up some of their embers for adoption to other couples? Any list, a waiting list in this sense? Mm -hmm. So, so far, we have embryos in our embryo bank. So for now, there's no waiting list for that. And uh, yeah, we, we we have couples who are willing to donate the embryos because that's the, the reason why we have an embryo bank because uh, patients who don't want to continue um, paying for the maintenance of the embryos but they don't want to destroy them and as they have had a very difficult fertility road for example uh, and journey and they are very conscious about that and they just want to help other, other patients if they have surplus embryos that are good, they say, okay, so let's help someone else have children and try to help them be as happy as we are right now that we are parents as well, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you again for this. And as I mentioned, you can definitely use the link I have just sent and to the team from Ferti. Definitely, they will get back to you with some details on the cost. But as uh, Dr. Maria already mentioned, they will be able to offer you online consultation as well so i guess that will be quite useful for sure um okay this you have mentioned but if you could add something can i provide my own donor so again egg donation in spain is anonymous so you cannot provide your own donor Um the only way that you could provide your own donor if, if, if it would be if we had the certainty that it is an anonymous donor and that you have not intervened in the selection so it's kind of a tricky situation. 
So why would they more generally know? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you again for clarifying this. And there's a, actually another question on the guarantee program, if you could take a look. So the just to clarify, BIB guarantee program is restricted with 35. Did I understand right? Or is it other no. 50? So no, that depends because we were speaking about different um, baby warranty programs. Mm -hmm. The baby warranty program, it is a different program depending on if it's egg do for egg donation or if it's for doing IVF with your own eggs. Yes. So for egg donation, it could the age the age restriction would be fifty years old mm -hmm. because that's the legal age in which we can do treatment in Spain. Uh, if you want to do IVF, usually there's two different um, baby warranty programs, one that it's up to 35 and another one that it's between 35 and 37 years old. Yes, perfect for clarifying this uh, once again. And uh, well, there is another, uh, sorry, I just missed it uh, because there was another question about mm -hmm. uh, the time and donors. Uh, do you have any idea is like how expensive or is... Um, is it like if someone wants to get a thigh a sperm donor? I I don't have I don't have an idea of the prices. I'm sorry. I, mm -hmm. I don't wanna I don't wanna give information that it's not accurate. So I don't know exactly. Not a problem for sure. Uh, thank you for um, for that question. And as I mentioned, uh, you can definitely check with the team. I'm sure they will be able to provide you with all the details. Uh, so it's it's the correct uh, answer as well, of course, then. All right, so we will be slowly finishing. So if you have any questions left, just go ahead and uh, do it now, okay? Um, and just let me look. Uh, I just need a second if there is something else. Uh, well, there is a follow-up actually here. So... Um, this happens when the embryo has not been tested genetically. I mean, the birth of a child with syndrome. Otherwise, the chance with a genetical PGT is low, right? I mean, yes. there's a follow-up. Exactly. Yes, if you've done a if you've done a PGT, it would be extremely unlikely that you had a baby with a Down syndrome because that would be detected with a PGT. Mm -hmm. okay. And when you sp when you speak about mental illness, that's uh, something very very wide. And it can be because of a lot of different reasons that someone can have a mental illness. As I was saying, it can be what we call the novel mutations, uh, problems that are not related with genetics, maybe problems related with uh, having having a difficult labor uh, at delivery or, or other things. Okay, so many different aspects mm -hmm. that can actually yeah. cause it. Perfect. Okay, thank you so much. Um, okay, and okay, there's one more question. Mm -hmm. If you could uh, have a look, what is the actual difference between embryo donation and embryo adoption, or is it the same? Yeah, it's the same thing, but people use the different names, so, mm -hmm. so that's why we put both, but it's it's the same thing. Okay, thank you for clarifying this. You're welcome. And I... I... Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just wanted to mention that I see that there has, has been a lot of questions regarding the, the baby warranty program. All the information about the baby warranty program is in our website. And again, if anyone has still any questions or wants to be just informed about the, what it's involved and an assessment of your specific case, you can contact the team and we're going to be more than happy to assess the case and see what could be the options for you. Yep, perfect. Thanks so much for that. And in the meantime, we just had another question. So let's get to it. Okay. So do you collaborate with any career companies that you can recommend and that have the all necessary loans uh, in Spain? Yes, we, we collaborate with uh, different career companies. But again, I prefer to double check uh, the list of couriers with our lab uh, and, then, um, and then get back to you with a recommendation of, of a of a courier that it's safe and that that we make sure that that uh, that fulfills all the quality uh, criteria just to confirm and uh, yeah, give you some warranties mm -hmm. okay perfect thanks again for that and uh, okay sorry missed one question so <laughs> just a short one do you test the sperm on spot do we test the sperm on spot? You mean the, the sperm for if we if we do the semen analysis in our clinic? Mm 
Yes. I believe so. Uh, if you yes. mean something else, please just say. Uh, I don't know if, if she, if, if Andrea, if you're meaning if we, to, if we do semen analysis in our clinic, yes. Mm -hmm. If you mean if we have our um, own sperm donors and if we have a, a, uh, mm -hmm. an own program of sperm donors, no. What we okay. do is we use the sperm banks. Okay. Mm -hmm. For the sperm. But we have our but we have our own egg donors, okay? Oh, okay. In some specific cases, uh, for some specific phenotypes, we might need to request the eggs from a bank, but mm -hmm. I'd say that 95% of our cycles of egg donation are with eggs from our own egg donors, and if we are running the program ourselves. I don't know yeah. if I'm answering the question, but... I believe so. However, if you would like to add anything, uh, well, just go ahead and type it in. Um, okay, I'm just checking and uh, let me have a look. Yes, so I live in France. Would I be able to get my medication here or you would send it to me? Um, you can get the medications in France. And otherwise, uh, if you have to come to the clinic for anything, we can we can give you the prescriptions and you can you can buy them here or otherwise we can send you the prescription and you can get the, the medication in France. Most, most to not say, all, uh, almost all the patients that we have from France get the medications there without any problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect, thanks for that. And uh, I'm just checking what else we have here. Mm, okay, there's another one that we mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry. Three, sure. We have three members left, but he um, has a son with severe autism. Will that be a problem? No PGS or PGT. Yeah, it's kind of tricky to say anything related with autism because autism mm -hmm. is what we call a, a multifactorial disease, which means that there is part that it's genetic, but there is other parts that might not be genetic. So it is, it is very, even if you wanted to try to do a PGT with the embryos that are left frozen, uh, there is no full 100% guarantee that this could be detected with a, with a PGT. Um, so I completely understand the concern. Um, I think that probably the best thing would be to do a, a consultation with a geneticist to, to explore all the different possibilities. But uh, with the autism, is difficult because of that. As I am saying, it's a multifactorial disease and not always because of a pro problem uh, related with uh, genetics. And it might be difficult to know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you again so much for that. There is uh, some um, some just um, comments, I would say, about those traveling donors. Yes, but I understand, of course, in Spain, again, such option is not possible because all is anonymous, of course, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so just wanted to clarify that. Um, just looking if we, okay, there is a follow up question to this one actually. I mean, not really a question, but uh, uh, just some additional information. So, the patient had the transfer, yes, and have a four month old, uh, but worried about the rest three embryos. Yeah, I completely understand. Mm. I completely understand. Perfect. Okay, understood. Um, okay, just uh, checking, but uh, do you do ERA test? Yes, we do ERA test when it is indicated. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, perfect for answering that one. Um, okay, I'm just checking. We have such uh, some some comments here, so I just want to make sure it's uh, okay. Well, it's it seems that we do not have any more questions uh, other than ERA tests. If you could just simply provide us with some details on that, as there is a question on that. Yeah, the ERA test is an endometrial receptivity test. Is a test to check if there is any kind of alteration in the in the receptivity of the endometrium when we are getting ready for an embryo transfer regardless of the fact if it's a, an embryo transfer of uh, embryos from an egg donor or own embryos usually it is recommended for all these patients who have what we call um, implantation failure so which means that they have already had several embryo transfers with very good quality embryos hopefully uh, embryos that have already been tested for PGT and that they did not get an implantation. 
and when, when we see that the thickness of the endometrium and everything's fine when we're doing scans and we don't see any other re reason why the embryos might not be implanting, uh, then usually the, it's when we recommend the error test. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, make sure that the window of implantation is not displaced, and then to uh, give the number of days of progesterone that we have to do to to give according to the result of the test, if there is any displacement. Thank you for clarifying that to us as well. And there's again a question about the approximate price for ERA test, uh, but yeah, not sure I'm sorry, I don't know. It's I fine. don't know the price. Definitely. So it's it's definitely okay. Just a reminder: if you would like to get any information on the prices, just please get back to uh, the team. You can use the link I have just sent, and I'm sure they will be able to help you out. And also, they uh, there are also um, there are also online consultation available so it might be even better <laughs> perfect thank you so much i believe we, we will finish uh, for today um of course as i mentioned if you have any questions left go ahead to the website and uh, then you will uh, get your answers i am sure very very sure and dr maria thank you so much again and again for joining our um initiative for joining our webinars uh, for providing all the details and for uh, for always uh, making it quite interesting thanks so much um it's as always it's a pleasure to to have you here and well thank you to all of you for joining us tonight and for all your questions uh, and, and of course, uh, Dr. Maria, well, you can see there are plenty of thank yous already. Thank you so all not for the being only one. listening, guys. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> It's yes, it must be pretty. Yes, it's a bit, a uh, bit late, but uh, we are happy to be here, right, so Dr. Maria? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perfect, Dr. Maria. Anything else you would like to add? Yeah, I just. Um know that this is a very difficult time for anyone who's looking for a pregnancy or doing a fertility treatment because of all the uncertainty that we're having with all the COVID. I think that it's very important to try to, to remain and stay positive and have faith and keep, uh, keep uh, uh, trying to, to fight for, the, for your dreams and just rely on good professionals, ask uh, all the information that you need before making any decisions. And hopefully we will all be able to, to see each other very soon, or you are going to be able to see the doctor in your country, whatever you decide to do the treatment, to start all the fertility journey and uh, become moms as soon as possible. And yes, uh, I wish you all, uh, uh, all the success in the world and in the fertility treatment that you do okay yes exactly best summary i believe right so fingers crossed and well take very good care of yourselves and well it's uh, uh, hope to see you back here actually tomorrow we will be here at 6 p.m uk time and at 8 p.m uk time and of course remember this has been recorded so you will be able to see um more of uh, i mean you will be able to rewatch it if you have any questions left remember to visit the site i have sent you in the chat section for all our uh, past events, you can visit our website, myivfenses.com, and there, all of them are right there. There are almost 2,000 questions and answers from the top fertility experts. I am sure you will find, you will be able to find some answers there as well. And well, thank you again. Thank you, Dr. Maria. You're Have welcome. a lovely evening. Enjoy thank your you. evening. Take and care. And well, uh, we will see each other soon. Yeah, I'm sure as well. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.